Hey guys, welcome back to AF Farms, and in this video we're going to be showing you how to set up a forestry related farm in new farmer mode uh, for Farming Simulator 22. So let's get into it. Alright, so let's get started with the new save game. So we're going to start in new farmer mode. We're going to start on Elm Creek. If you've got mods installed, you can leave them installed. Uh, I'm just going to leave my mods as is, but I won't be using them for the purposes of this tutorial. Okay, alright, let's load in. Alright, that's loaded. So let's just go for our standard character. We're going to skip the in-game tutorial. First up is we're going to grab a $500,000 loan. So the re loan repayments on $500,000 are going to be $1,666 per month. So let's put the money in. Okay, cool. That is $500,000. So we've got $600,000 in the bank. We're going to harvest this wheat. So let's connect everything up here. So in New Farmer, we own fields 45, 46, and 47. So what I'm thinking is we're probably going to put, we're going to plant some trees um, in field 46. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this guy. We're going to grab our equipment. I'm going to move this off the field, and we're going to we're going to plant a bunch of. So obviously we're starting on forestry, so logging. So we're going to plant some trees that we can harvest with a tree harvester. So that's going to be our first thing. So let's. Now the reason why I recommend doing it this way is because obviously we're in. We're in a starting farm situation and we can utilize the area that we've got to plant trees. So let's go and get the required equipment at the shop and then I'll show you the plan moving forward. So let's head on down to the shop. So if you're not familiar with the shop, just down, just down here, I'm going to send this worker down there and then we're going to have a look at the equipment. So what we want to do is we want to buy a tree planter. So we want to come into tools. We want to find forestry equipment. And we want the Damcon PL75 tree planter. So this will do trees and poplars. And then we've got a, few, a couple of stump grinders and trailers and other such things. So we are going to go uh, grab the Damcon. We're going to lease this. And that's it sitting there in all its glory. Right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go buy some trees. Now, to buy trees, you need to come into objects. You need to go into... Let's try big bag pallets first, so it's not that one. Regular pallets. Okay, so we've got all that. we've got liquid fertil liquid fer fertilizer, liquid herbicide. Um, we've got poplar, sugarcane, tree saplings, and seeds. And then we've got some platinum expansion tree saplings. Okay, so base game, we've got 20 pieces of tree saplings. So let's go into customize, and now we can pick the variety that we want. Now. There are quite a few here, so you might not have the same that I do. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to go pines. So let me just double check something quickly. Because if you don't select the right tree for a tree harvester, which is we'll get to that uh, later, you won't be able to use the tree harvester. So there's two main types of trees in the game. So there's deciduous, which are trees that you lose their leaves. Uh, they cannot be used with a tree harvester. They have to be cut down with a chainsaw. And then you've got conifers, which are the pines and the spruces. Uh, which are these guys here. So conifer is spruce, pine, stone pine, and cypress. So I believe the stone pine you can't cut down with a tree harvester. So you just need to be wary of that. Um, so what I think we're going to do, just to be safe, is if we go back to the shop, go back to the pallets menu, buy our tree saplings, we are going to go pine. So pine or spruce would be your go -to, the go-tos. I just prefer pines because they're a little bit easier to visually manage for me. But if you were going to go pine or spruce, you'd be fine. Okay, so let's buy some pines. Okay, let's drive on next to the trees. And now they're in the tree harvester ready to go. So we've got helper buy turned on. So what this is going to allow us to do is to plant um, a plantation of trees. So let's get this guy back to the farm. So we're driving back on a worker over to field 46. I'm going to jump into this guy back into the build mode. And we are going to pop down some solar panels. So I'm going to put, let's go, let's go two or three. Actually, let's go three. So productions, we want generators. We're going to pop down some solar panels. So I usually put down solar panels for every map, um, just to give me some passive income when we're doing when we're doing other jobs. So they'll net us about three thousand to four thousand on average per month, uh, and that's a good place to put them just out of the way we can utilize this field for the plantation um, we can plant some other crops in this area as well and then we're going to leave this area potentially free to build on okay now with seasons if we scroll down to our crop types trees can be planted any time of the year 
they're independent of the crop calendar unless you're going to plant poplars which are the last day to plant poplars is august so poplars are basically a wood chipping uh, type of plant uh, tree sorry so you, you use them for wood chips but what we're focused on is creating our own uh, plantation uh, pine forest so what i'm going to do light up this worker so the reason why we're using a worker is because the worker will work in a recognized field we don't have to drive it so you can see we go we've got one tree planted there and then we'll get one about there and these guys will grow up into quite tall trees and then once that happens we're going to come through with the tree harvester and cut them down now we've also got on our land so if i have a look i'll just get out of the way here so we're not in the way of anything um, on our land i believe so if we have a look at what we own so everything in this blue boundary is what we own so all these elm trees around here it's about to get run over by this combine all these elm trees so there's an oak tree just here uh, that's a downy service berry we got all these american elms which we can mulch and wood chip um, and turn into you know we can we can cut them down for a profit okay got a big oak tree here as well so there's a couple of different ways you can do this and I'm going to show you both, but our primary income source is going to be cutting down these um, uh, uh, pine trees once they're fully grown. So part of the strategy initially is to basically grow them. So we're not going to really do any other type of farming. We're just going to set up and make this happen. Now, that if you're playing this through your playthrough, and if you're watching and following along, uh, you can definitely do other types of farming in between. But I recommend that you basically follow along to start with and then add that later once I show you how to set up the the logging process all right so for now what I'm going to do is we're going to jump into this guy and we're going to go cultivate that wheat field that we just harvested so in preparation to potentially plant something new now we could pick up the straw with a with a baler if we wanted to but we're not going to worry about that we're really just here for the logging um, and also if I wanted to I could plant another plantation area um, in this area to basically supplement our tree supply so let's go and have a look at how many trees we've got planted so far so you can see that there we've got three rows on the go we've got basically one two three four five six seven eight rows and we did we did miss one for some reason now I just want to double check this guy actually is doing helper buy yeah he is so they're still lined up pretty well now obviously these trees take a little while to grow so that's why we've got the solar panels so every time we go to sleep we're going to sleep through we're going to generate some income which is going to help offset our lease costs for when we go and purchase a tree harvester we're also going to look to purchase the sawmill so there's two there's two sawmills that's a that's johnson's farmer's market so we've got the sawmill and the sawmill so one's a sell point one's a production and then we've also got the carpentry which is down here so that's where we can take our rough sawn timber turn it into other things uh, for, like per, uh, products to sell so we're going to talk about that as well all right what i'm going to do is i'm going to let this guy finish off planting this field of trees and then we're going to come back in with the next steps so see you in a few minutes all right there we go so field number 46 is planted so that's our first lot of plantation so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move over to field 45 and i'm going to do the same thing but what i'm going to do is basically start sleeping and get these trees to grow and then once they're fully grown we're going to start the harvesting process so basically what will happen is this field will grow up we'll harvest it we will reset it stump grind get all the logs out of there and at the same time this field will be growing so basically what will happen is while one field is growing one field is getting harvested we're talking about trees here and then they just switch over so it's about making sure because there's a lot of time between harvesting and planting so we want to speed the process up as much as possible and by having two fields we can definitely do that so let's go and sleep um, and the other thing with sleeping in rapid succession is we're going to get some income from our solar panels so let's go ahead sleep for the first day and then we're going to monitor the growth we're going to monitor the growth of the trees as we go through so obviously in the second field we're going to have some trees that are at different growth stages but that doesn't really matter i just wanted to get the first field done so the growth stages are pretty uniform now we're going to get weeds as well so no growth as yet 
Uh, and also the weeds don't matter, so don't, don't stress too much about that. All right, I didn't catch how much solar panel income we made, but let's go ahead and sleep again. Now, it seems kind of strange that we're sleeping straight out of the bat, but this is what we've got to do to get our trees to grow. The other alternative is to go buy a plot of land that already has trees on it. Um, but why you would want to do it this way is because it then becomes a bit more of a sustainable farm. So 12,000. And we don't have to transit too far to cut down and transport the trees once they, once they grow and get planted. So this guy's still going. Cool. Now my understanding is trees grow regardless of the season as well. So they'll grow throughout the year. They're basically independent of the grain crops. So we don't need to worry about that. And the other thing too is to also make sure that we can handle these logs and store them in a easy fashion. That's why we'd want to do this. Okay. No growth just yet. So even though they're not showing any growth, they are actually growing. So don't stress if you haven't seen any growth. I think this is coming up to day four, day five, something like that. Now we're coming into winter, so we're going to get reduced output on our solar panels, which is totally fine. Okay, still no growth. Let's go again. Now, like I said, the beauty of this is we're getting supplementary income from our solar panels. Obviously, it drops off in winter, but that's totally fine. Now, the reason why we want to have the, the solar panels in play is when we start to lease some very expensive equipment, uh, those leasing costs will be covered. All right, so here you go. You can see... Our pines have entered the first growth state. So that is them there. Nice, beautiful rows of pine trees. And we've got some here that have grown up as well. So let's let's keep going. Okay, I've lost how many days we're up to, but cool. Still the same. Let's go again. Now we're obviously not focusing on any of the arable crop, crops. So any of the corn, wheat... Anything like that, this is a strictly 100% uh, timber logging plantation farm operation. Okay, same growth state. So what happens is they basically grow in phases, so not, nothing, nothing much happens, and then they'll shoot up. So what I might do is I'll jump into the landscaping tool, and we'll have a look at the trees uh, at their different growth states, so we can get an idea. So I don't think they've grown up again. No, they haven't. Yeah, so if we go into the landscaping tool, if we go to trees, so these are all the tree types. So if we go and find old pine, which is well, these pine trees here. So that's what a sapling looks like. So that's where we're at at the moment. Next one along is a young pine. So that's its next growth state. Then the growth state after that is small pine. Then we get into medium pines. Then we get into large pines. Then we get into old pines. So these are fully grown. So that's what we're expecting to see in this field here. Now the reason what this is the reason why I go for pine trees because the trunk of the tree is quite uh, slender. Okay. Uh, whereas the spruce has a ton of uh, branches coming off, so it just gets a little bit visually sort of cluttered, which I'm not a huge fan of. Um, and this for me. Just makes it a little bit more manageable so that's what we're looking for in terms of growth for the final stage and then that's going to be where we're going to cut them down you can cut them down at any stage but if you're going to grow them you might as well grow them to their maximum height just so you get the most yield just takes the most time okay so it looks like we've hit the next growth state so you can see that there now hopefully this doesn't tank my frame rate because that is also a risk with having lots of trees close by so a lot of trees close together in this sort of configuration can cause some issues in that regard, but we should be fine. All right, still, still at that growth state. I've lost track of how many days we're up to, but I think we've nearly gone through a full year. So once we get to August, that's 12 months because we did start planting in August the prior year because that's when you start the game on New Farmer. That's the months you start in. So end of summer. Okay, I could probably just turn around and do this, couldn't I? Okay, so we're starting to really ramp up now. Okay, next month will be 12 months. 
So we're getting about 10, 12 grand out of our solar panels as well. So that's going to be about 120,000 a year. Now those solar panels will take two years in game to pay off uh, individually. And then up from there, they start making a profit. So we're basically halfway through, um, halfway through their cost cycle. Okay, so here we are into year two. So this is month 13. So a lot of sleeping, but it is necessary to get these trees to grow. Okay, it looks like we've hit the next growth stage. So you can see that there. Frame rate is tanking a little bit, but it should improve once they once they get to a more slender form. All right, cool. Twelve thousand property income. I'd like to see that. Uh, I think we have potentially changed state again. So this is twelve months plus two months, so fourteen months. Let's go for month fifteen. Okay, month fifteen. It's getting a bit dark, but very hard to see here. So let's just. I think they've gone up again, so I'm going to sleep to 9am, just to improve our lighting. So it looks like they've gone up again, potentially. Let's have a quick look. And the other thing you'll notice is the deciduous trees, so all these elm trees, downy service berries, etc. Um, they all go the autumny fall colours, even the oak trees, so they'll lose their leaves. So what, what we should notice in December, so the middle of winter, all the trees around the farm will lose their leaves whereas our pine trees so the conifers will retain their leaves so that's that's the telltale that's the telltale sign between the differences in tree types so like clockwork so there's that's a big oak tree so it's lost its leaves all the elm trees have lost their leaves yet our pine trees so these guys have shot up again so they're getting they're getting to where they need to be these guys will follow along not too far away Cool. All right, let's sleep again. So we're just getting these guys to grow. And then we can start really getting into the, the, the logging aspect. Cool. All right, can really see they're cranking along now. Now, what state are they at? Let's have a quick look. So if I jump into the build mode, come down to here. So frame rate's starting to have a rough one. Grab the trees, cruise on down to the pine trees down the very end. So I think we're at, looks like we're at this stage. So we know we've got another two stages of growth to go until we're at the full height. All right, let's sleep again. Okay, cool, how many trees we got? I reckon that's gonna be enough actually. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cancel this guy out because I don't wanna overcrowd this area with too many trees because the frame rate on the PS5 can have a few issues. And we're going to have tons of trees here, so that is going to be plenty for our purposes. I mean, probably half of, half that amount of trees would be a good starting point. So I think we've got plenty there to work with, which is going to cover us for a long time. So let's move on, see if we get another change in growth state. Okay, getting a little bit taller. I think they've hit the next stage. No, not quite, so we've still got two more to go. All right, sleep again. All right, April, so we're year and a half through. I don't think they've changed. Okay, so these guys down the very end, they've entered their second to final growth stage. Okay, so you can kind of see. So what I'm going to do is let's push through to two years. So I think that's going to be pretty close to how long this takes to grow. Now, obviously, in real life, these trees take long time, longer than two years to grow. Potentially, I'm no tree expert, but I've got a suspicion two years is going to be when these guys hit maximum height, which we're not far off. Okay, so I think we've got one more to go. And then we've got a whole bunch of trees in here in the front, which will come in over the subsequent months. Okay, June, July, August. So August will be two years. Okay, it's still not quite there yet. Oh, actually... Maybe the guy's on the very, very end. No, not quite. Okay, let's push through to August anyway. And see what happens. Okay, almost there. Let's go one more month. Okay, two years to the day. And there we go. So we've got, so if we jump into the landscaping tool, so the first lot of trees that were planted, which are these guys here. 
so you can see they've reached maximum height so the first three rows are maximum height and then we've got the subsequent one two three four five rows are about well maybe a month or two off so we are now ready to harvest so what we're going to do is we're going to go buy actually let's go and inspect the tree so 23 meters so we'll go down and inspect the really big ones so they do look pretty cool in this configuration I mean it's a little bit unusual for this sort of farm setup but at the end of the day they're treated like a plantation situation so we can plant regrow and harvest which is what they do in real life now this is this is the tricky part so what you need to do is if because i'm not actually sure i'm going to buy a chainsaw okay and we so you push up on the d-pad to activate your chainsaw now we have to run back over because i tabbed out of a vehicle what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut down one of these trees so one of the really long ones and hopefully we get a measurement of the circumference or the diameter of the trunk because that's going to impact on what tree harvester we buy because if we buy a tree harvester that can't handle the diameter of the tree that we want to cut down then we're basically um, SOL because we can't harvest the tree so let's go for let's go for one on the end so this is the first one one of the first ones we planted so now it's going to be pretty well correct um, and what we're going to do is basically with your chainsaw the direction the blade is going to cut is going to dictate where the tree is going to fall so I'm going to try and send it off the road Ooh, let's drop down cut it down here now once it's cut down we should be able to inspect it cool that's perfectly felled so what do we got okay it doesn't tell us the diameter which is a bit of a problem I think what I'm going to do is let's go and have a look at the tree harvesters so I know the spruces are quite quite wide so you're going to have to you're going to have to go for a wider tree harvester so when i'm talking about tree harvesters we've got basically three in the base game so we've got the komatsu 931 xc it'll do a not it'll do a 71 centimeter uh, uh circumference tree or diameter tree the ponzi cobra will do 64 so a little bit smaller and the rotney h21d will do 80 so this will do spruce spruce trees um but it is the most expensive option so my advice would be Go the biggest diameter tree harvester you can afford. Now we do have some others down here as part of the premium and platinum expansions, but let's focus on base game. We're gonna we're gonna go the big guy because it'll give us flexibility for what we want to do later. Let's go and inspect that. This is it, this is it here. So we're just gonna lease it. So it's gonna cost us 23 grand to lease initially, and it's gonna cost us 4,000 per day and 9,000 per hour. So very very expensive. So. That's why we want to have the solar panels to supplement um, our leasing costs. So let's go ahead and lease that. Now it doesn't matter. We've cut down that one tree, but we can still we can still harvest with this guy. We can still pick it up. Now this guy's obviously pretty slow, so I'm going to send him back on a worker, and then I'll explain how to use it, and then what our what our next steps are going to be. So I'll see you over at the farm, and we'll just quickly admire this awesome bit of gear. It's such a weapon, eh? cool all right let's go and get go and put it to use all right so we here we are ready to get cracking so let's unfold the tree harvester so up on the d-pad okay let's turn the tree harvester on once it's unfolded so turn on tree harvester with square so that's the tree harvester in the front there okay so that's what's going to grab the logs for us Okay, now it's turned on. So what we want to do is change the cut length. So we can choose between 6, 8, 9, 12, 20. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably going to go 8 meter cut lengths. Let's actually go let's actually go 6 to start with. So L1 triangle, 6, to six, is, 6 meter lengths are going to be a little bit easier to move. Uh, at least initially. Um, Alright, now L1 up and down on the right analog stick we'll move it in and out and we'll move it side to side okay r1 is gonna lift it up and down and extend the boom okay so basically what i do is generally speaking you want to keep it just at the at, just off the ground and probably just over to the side and then basically what i'm going to do is come up to a tree that i want to cut going to drop it down a touch get cut 
pull it back slightly and then we're just going to start cutting. So this is going to cut it into six meter lengths, lift it up a little bit. And we're going to try and stack the, uh, the cut log bales fairly, fairly neatly if we can. And we're going to try and have as minimal waste as possible. So we did end up with, end up with a little bit of waste there, but that's okay. Now what I'm going to do is tilt the harvester head down, okay? And I'm going to try and grab this one that I cut before. So it's a little bit, a bit of, a, bit of an odd spot. So if I hit cut, that'll pick it up. And that's now going to cut this down for us. Cool. Now, as I recall, we had three rows. So we ended up with a little bit of waste. So that's going to be wood chippings. So let's turn, let's tilt our harvester head back up. Okay. Line this guy up for the next run. Okay. Once you're in close enough, you'll get the cut, cut command. And then we can just swing it around. Now don't worry if these piles aren't perfect because I'm going to show you a method to sort them out uh, soon. So let's go and cut a few more of these guys. Okay, lift this guy up. Now we said our first three rows were the ones we were going to cut. Let's turn some lights on because it's a little bit dark over here. Obviously with the shade. Now to make this as smooth as possible, you want to make minimal adjustments to your cut height. So you can see there we're pretty good. Cool. Now you want to avoid doing what I just did before the tree's fallen over. Because you may end up flipping the harvester over. Now all we need to do, the machine's going to hold it for us, all we need to do is just go through the cutting process. All good. Alright, let's grab the next guy. Okay, I'm stuck on a branch. Now you see that band that just came up there? So if I think if you own the Platinum Expansion, you get the tree aligning tool. Okay. So let's let that tree drop down. Uh, helps to align the harvester if you're having trouble um, manually lining it up. But with a little bit of practice, like I said, just keep your cutting head as close to the ground as possible. And then try not to move the arm of the harvester so much. And maneuver it with the vehicle. So obviously we're quite high here because I had to move it. So I've lifted the wheels off the ground. Got the cut icon, so we don't have to be bang on for it to register the, the cut. Okay, I'm just going to swing that over to that pile. Let's push it down to the road, but that's okay. If we want it here, we just lift it up. Tidy it up a fraction. Cool. Alright. Now what I'm going to do is I'll throw on a time lapse. I'm going to cut down a, a few more and then we'll come back in and then we'll move into the next stage of processing these logs. So I'll see you in a few minutes. So we've got a few logs cut there. So let's go and have a look at these guys. I'm just going to get this guy off the road. We'll jump out. Okay, so six, six, meter, six meter bale lengths. Just chilling on the grass verge here. Now, how do we pick these up? So there's a couple of different ways. So let's go and have a look at those in the shop menu. So you've got log forwarders. Okay, so these guys here, which will pick them up via crane um, and then load them onto the back. You've also got trailers that can be towed by a tractor. 
Okay, so you've got a couple of transport options. So you've got four, you've got trailers. So you've got the Anderson M16 and the Kelsa 144ND. Uh, there's two examples. So these guys have a crane arm and a claw that can pick up individual logs and load them onto the trailer. You've also got a little bit more of a larger option here. Then you've got the timber runner, which you'll do, which is probably what we're going to use. Okay, so we also need a, need a truck for that. You've got a bunch of mulchers, stump grinders, uh, wood chipper, tree planter we've already talked about. Now in the vehicles, uh, we've got the forwarders. So each tree harvester has a accompanying for forwarder, which is basically like the tra trailed version of um, what we were talking about before. But basically what this allows you to do is to get in and out of rough terrain, steep areas, hard to access areas to pull logs out. Um, and that's what this machine is for, okay? And then it would take it to a processing point where it can be loaded onto trucks, uh, for example. So what we're gonna do with, for our purposes is we are probably going to employ a little bit of a method that I um, developed when I was getting frustrated with logging, and that is to create a what I'm calling a, a bunker or a log bunk. So we get into so basically what we do is we want base game fences. We want to come over to the timber fence, which is this guy just here, and we want to have it so the smooth side is facing outwards so let's just do I don't know let's go so push it back as far as we can from from this area so let's go let's go from here total snapping on so we want to try and get it parallel to the adjacent fence and we'll get it onto our land just like so and we're going to join up with this area which we can't do because We want the steel poles to be on the other side. So what I'm going to try and do is if I go about here, here-ish, close to, that looks to me to be about 90 degrees. Now it doesn't have to be precisely 90 degrees, but the closer the better. You know what, I think I can do a little better than that. So let's try, get our GPS on 276. Sorry, 270 degrees. And let's try this. So we'll come out to about there. Get that to join. Cool. All right, let's go and have a look at what this is. So it's basically a right angled wall. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna push logs into here and then we're gonna square them up, up against this fence, okay? So the way that we do that is we're gonna need a front loader. So a wheel loader is probably the best option. So any of these guys will really do the bigger probably the better so let's go ahead with a let's go maybe the middle of the road option so that's 180,000 this guy I've used before pretty effectively and I haven't had haven't had much issue so let's go the middle let's go the middle guy so let's go the class Torian 1511 and we are going to lease that so this is going to be another expensive lease okay cool next thing we want to do is we want to grab so let's go to front loader tools and we want to grab a flat blade. Now I've got a whole bunch of mods here, so don't worry about those. So actually we want, we're in wheel loaders, so this is the ones we want. So I'm pretty sure that's what we just purchased. So yeah, wheel loader, class Torian 1511 is a wheel loader. So we want wheel loader tools. So we've got the log fork. So we're going to grab the log fork, but not right now. We've got a different log fork, which is more for singular logs, primarily. Uh, we've got the high dump bucket, so these are mods. These are also mods. Yeah, we've got mods here. So let's go and have a look at levelers. So I reckon if we go, let's try this, maybe this guy. That's a 3.7 meter. Yeah, so we want to get a leveler. Now we're not going to do silage leveling. Now that's not what we want. So this one here, the MES 400, okay. And we want to grab it with a wheel loader attachment. Okay, so let's lease that. Now the tool that I'd normally use is called the multi-blade. So I've got a video on that on my um, logging playlist. I'm just going to have a quick look here if we can find it. Yeah, so it's this one here. So this is the forestry multi-blade. Okay, so very similar to what we're going to be using the leveling blade for. But this is 
purpose built for well can be purpose built for logging for logging purposes all right let's grab our front loader now this uh, leveler should attach hopefully and the reason why i've gone the middle of the road yeah there we go beautiful okay so let's lift this guy up let's unfold the leveler so it's got a big flat pushing surface which is what we want to help move these logs around so what we're going to do is we're going to use this to push the logs in and around where we need it to go now we can also fold it to utilize the corners so to push sideways etc but we're going to unfold it like that this is how we're going to primarily use it um, and what we're going to do is skim skim the ground not quite like that it's also got a or well, should have so that's tilt function yeah doesn't quite have a left and right movement which is okay but we'll, we'll be able to make it work so let's head over to back to the farm and we'll go from there all right here we are so we've got our piles of logs now we might we may have to turn traffic off here this can be a little bit problematic and all we're going to do is push these logs into the fence now it doesn't matter if they go one way or the other all we want to do is have them facing primarily all in the one direction to start with now this is where extra horsepower comes in handy because we can get over those obstacles pretty well now if those stumps are becoming really problematic we can grind them get them out of the way okay so it looks like naturally this is going to go up against the back fence which is actually perfectly fine now I've got other tutorials that go into this in a little, little bit more detail let's move this tree harvester out of the way so I'm just going to show you the general concept quickly and then show you how we can progress it okay so we've got some logs there Happy days. Now basically what we're going to try and do is push these down, to, down the end. So I'm going to try and flick these guys around. So I don't want to have two layers. And then I'm just going to push them back in. Into alignment. Now this seems like a lot of work. But as you get better and more proficient at doing it this way, what you'll find is you can load and store these logs uh, nice and neatly. So then when it comes time for you to pick them up and transport them into the trailer, which is usually the hardest, most laborious part, when we come through with our log fork, what, what's going to happen is we're going to be able to pick these guys up nice and quickly. So we go, I'll just get that pushed in. I'm just going to re-tilt that. So there we've got a nice kind of square pile. So if I flick around the front here. Give that a nudge. Pretty, pretty nice, neat, tidy pile. All right, so let's go ahead and have a look. So basically what we'll do now is when we come in with the front loader and the trailer, we'll be able to pick these guys up nice and easy. And we can go from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and grab that log fork. So I'm going to drop the blade off. So let's just drop the blade off. Just here. We'll go back, grab the log fork. So we're utilizing the same machine for two jobs. And then we'll go and grab a trailer after that. So let's send this guy back to the shop on a worker. Okay, so while he is driving... Hopefully not into our harvester. Let's try this again. Okay, so while he's heading down to the shop, let's have a look at wheel loader tools. So we've got the Magsy log fork. Now there are a couple of modified log forks that I do like, so I'll mention them quickly. One of them is the Lizard Logistics Timber log fork, and it should be in this section here. This CSZ mod pack is quite massive. Uh, where are we? Yeah, this one here. So this is the one I would normally recommend. If you're playing with mods reason is is because it's quite it's got quite a big opening it's quite big but base game equipment 
we're just going to go with the magsy which is this guy here so let's lease that so this is a wheel loader tool so it should connect no problem so basically we've got the up and down we've got the open and close all right let's head back to the farm and we're going to go pick up a load of logs in preparation to load them onto a trailer so I'll see you over there all right so let's grab the truck so we've gone with the man truck and the flegal timber runner so if you're not sure where to find those forestry equipment flegal timber runner right there and then we've just gone for the man tgs 1850 18500 now this is going to be used to transport our logs to the cell point or to the sawmill so what we'll do is we'll go to the sawmill first we'll get them sold and then we'll look at the production chain um, aspect of the log farm all right so basically what we do back at the farm we've got our front loader with a log fork we've picked up a couple of logs so we've gone this route so I've just, just I've demonstrated that before but we'll go through that again now if we got a couple more logs in there we'll be sweet so basically what you can see here is this has basically got four bunks set up so what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and load these guys in the back section now the tricky part here is just to make sure you're lined up get it dropped in let these logs go now it sort of hung up on the side of the trailer there yep and then they're in so as you get a little bit better at this you'll find this process will be very quick so if we drop that down get it very close to on the ground so we just come in another good option here is just to sort of use that to pull the pull the logs in sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't the lizard logistics timber fork is far better for this operation okay so if we get into there like that so i'm just hooked up on the fence there which is not ideal keep closing that that grab oops it's still closing so we picked up what have we got five there four four five so that's not a bad run so what we want to do is we want to aim for that center bunk this time we're a bit, a bit more clear which is good open the arm drop them in and then we're free and clear cool so i'll do one more load and then we'll go and get these guys transported for sale now if this is becoming problematic what you can do is you can actually delete part of the fence so if we come into back into the build mode demolish we want to delete that part of the fence now we're now we're going to get hung up on the other part hopefully not too badly a little bit so what i probably would do is i'd make sure i'm clear of obstacles let's drive it forward make sure we're scoop it back it's going to open it up with a view of pushing it in a bit further there we go cool and that's got it so you can see in three lifts we've done half a trailer of loading now if you've ever tried to load logs individually on console you know how painful it can be now you can still do that but this just allows us to gain a little bit of efficiency and if we can get our last guy in yep just so we could probably get one more load in there but we're going to just persevere with that for now okay let's get this strapped down and then we're going to drive up to the sawmill so the sawmill if you haven't been there before on elm creek is up at this area here so we've got the sawmill production point and the sawmill uh, cell point so i think there's also wood chips up there as well so let's head up there we'll get these logs sold and processed and then we'll talk about the next steps in the production chain so see you in a couple of minutes all right here we are at the sawmill so let's cruise on in here all right so the sawmill part is out the back so let's cruise on over all right so we got wood chips over here okay so you can drop them off there the actual cell point etc is here so okay so this is the unloading point so we drive into here and then we can interact with the cell wood icon if we hit l3 that'll take the wood that's in that trailer and then sell it to the sawmill at the market rate now this is a production point so i'm not going to buy that just yet because i want to show you something 
So we're going to sell the wood first and then we're going to buy the production point. So basically all the production points in the game function as a sell point initially. Um, and then once you purchase the production point, it no longer becomes a sell point. It's now a factory. So sell the wood. So that's 6,870 for that sold wood. Okay, so not a huge amount of money. Obviously you get more money for the longer lengths of timber. The straighter they are, the better quality, etc. But now if we go ahead and purchase this point, which we're about to for 100 grand, we can see that wood that we've just sold into this into the sawmill. So if we come into the productions menu to show it off a little bit clearer. We sold 9,000 litres of wood. Now there's 9,000... We, we sold 9,000 litres of wood to the sawmill. And now what we've got is 9,000 litres in there ready to be turned into planks. So planks are the production output. And then those planks can be taken to the carpentry, which is all the way down here. So let's go and visit that place to be turned into furniture and other things. But it also functions as a sell point as well. All right, so we're down here at the carpentry. So the carpentry is a production point. So let's have a look at this guy. So we can sell wood down here. So this is the wood sell point down here. If we come around the front, we have a production building, which we can buy for 60,000. So basically the sell wood functions the same way as it does at the sawmill. Okay, so I'm not going to demonstrate that again. We're just going to buy this point straight up. So let's go and buy it. Okay, so uh, we've got wood planks at the sawmill and then we've got furniture that is created from wood. So the recipe is just raw wood. And then we've got furniture from planks which come from the sawmill. So basically we can bring in raw wood, um, unprocessed wood, um, and four trees, essentially, let's call them trees, will produce five wood and 15 wood chips. The planks, so we get five planks and we'll get seven furniture. Okay, and what will happen is there should be a storing point somewhere. So our furniture will spawn here and our wood chips should go somewhere around here potentially. Let's have a quick look in the build mode. So a bit of an unknown as to where the wood chips will end up, but let's uh, let's check that out later on. All right, let's head back to the main farm quickly. Now the other thing too is if we want to cut down our transit time from the sawmill uh, to the north of the main farm and the carpentry to the south of the main farm what we can do is we can buy those buildings in the build mode so if we come into the build mode go into productions come into factories which we are in now you can see we've got the carpentry here okay so maybe not the exact same carpentry that's on the map but we've got a carpentry point here that we can bring wood to and we will also have a sawmill of some description so this is the so let's have a look. These are pre platinum expansion. Yeah, so platinum expansion sawmill. So if you've got the platinum, platinum expansion, you can put that down. Uh, we've got a couple of other mods here. Let's have a look. So this is a, this is a modified sawmill. Okay, so that's from the downloadable content section of the game. So I think the only building. So in the base game, it looks like the only building we can put down is the carpentry. Uh, we've got the carpentry that looks very familiar to the one down on the south of the map. And then that's it. So if you do have the premium expansion, you can, sorry, the platinum expansion, you can put in the sawmill, which I think we looked at before. So we've got a sawmill here we can put down, okay? So just to save you a bit of transit time, if, if that's what you wanted to do. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up some more of these logs. So I'm going to restore our fence just because we've, we had to move part of it. So let's rebuild it. Okay, rebuilt. Cool. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down some more trees and then we're going to go from there. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up some more trees. So let's grab our, let's grab this guy. Uh, first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute these planks. So if we go into here to the, to the point, we're going to set these planks to distributing and we're going to set these wood chips to storing. So I believe the wood chips will store uh, in this area here. Okay, as a byproduct of making the planks. So the the planks will get produced from the wood that we put in and they're going to distribute down into the carpentry. All right, let's head back to the main farm. So we'll grab this guy. All right, so let's grab some of these logs and we'll get them loaded into our little bunker storage. So I'm going to get these guys pushed in and then we'll come back in.
All right, there we go. So we've got another load, of, another load of logs ready to load. So let's switch out to the log fork. And our logging truck should have returned. So make sure that jewel's all the way open, which it is. Okay, so he's just a little bit shy of the shop. So we're getting moved into position and then we'll continue loading. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these logs uh, over to the carpentry and see if we can't produce some furniture. So let's get these loaded. So using the same method basically as before. So like I said before, the Lizard Logistics Timber Log Fork is definitely far more suitable for this sort of loading method. So I'm just going to move the trailer into a rough position, take those chest tension straps off. Now the other thing you've got to consider is when you're loading from this end, you've got the log guard screen towards the front of the truck. So just something to remember. Okay, let's see if we can release this. Cool. Alright. We'll get the rest of these loaded and then we'll come back in. Alright, see if we can get these guys in. Not quite, not quite um, finessed as the other section, but should be close enough. Let's see if we can get this out without incident. Okay, not too bad. Alright, so let's get this loaded up. Tension straps on. And we'll take this down to the carpentry, so I'll see you over there. Alright, here we are at the carpentry, so let's go and unload these logs. So, this will take raw logs and turn them into furniture, so if we drive, maybe that'll do it. Okay, so I'm actually inside the carpentry, that's handy. Let's try this again. Okay, can we sell the wood, so let's see what happens. Okay, I took some of it, so I'm not close enough to the trigger, so let's reposition, try this again. Okay, took all of it except for those couple of logs just up there. Okay, let's try it now. Okay, that's got it all. Okay, so 17,000 litres of wood has gone in. Okay, so wooden planks, very good. So what have we got? Sawmill, 8,000 litres of wood, it's distributing planks to the carpentry. The carpentry is receiving wood it's creating planks as well because it's got planks from the sawmill Act, all the productions are running and it's going to store furniture so if we jump out here around the side we'll have some furniture spawn there so let's go back to the farm and let's sleep for one day and see if we can't get a pallet of furniture to sell obviously our plantation's still going to keep growing and if i was doing this for real i'd probably cut down all these trees process them take them over to the um, take them over to the sawmill and the carpentry for processing, but I just want to sh showcase what the just want to showcase what the production chain looks like for wood and for planks. All right, let's have a look at the production production menu. So, 125 liters of furniture storing. So let's go and have a look at the actual carpentry. So we need to go around the back here. So there we go, we have a pallet of furniture. Now that furniture can now be sold. So if we have a look at the price of furniture, so if we come into the prices menu, come down and find furniture, it is worth $6,510. So there you go, that's how you can basically make money from furniture in the base game. Now, if you have the Platinum expansion, your wood making 
repertoire increases. So all these things here, armoire, barrel, bathtub, birdhouse, bowl, bucket, all this stuff, um, all these timber products are available in the premium, no, platinum expansion, which includes silver on forest. So if you're new to the game and you really want to get stuck into logging and forestry um, to a great degree, that's the map you want to be on. And the platinum expansion is definitely where it's at for timber production. But this is just one way to start a timber farm. Obviously, we're going the plantation style. So we've got our little bunker method, which we've sort of already talked about, using base game equipment. Now, this does improve drastically with mods. So if you're on PC, you'll have auto-loading mods for, for trailers. So you don't need to worry about um, the manual, ha manual handling aspect that we've just, just shown here. But if you're a console player, it's definitely an efficient way to pick up multiple logs, get them transported to a cell point or a production point in bulk. And then having a forested plantation area on a piece of farmland um, makes the whole process of growing trees, um, harvesting them that much more realistic. Well, not, I wouldn't say realistic, but uh, potentially more efficient. So let's have a quick discussion about other areas on the map where logging can be a good option. So if we go to the sawmill. So if we look at other areas uh, that aren't on the main farm for logging, so we're just south of the sawmill, so you can see we've got a lot of pine trees here that we can cut down. They're not as densely spaced, that's for sure, but there's varying lengths of trees. They're all planted in nice, neat rows. So this, to me, looks like it's a bit of a plantation setup as well. And if we come down to this side, we've got a whole bunch of elm trees, which we could use for wood chips. But this, to me, looks like a bit of a setup forest forestry area. So you can definitely buy the land and work in here as well. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. Uh, by all means. Alright, let's head back to the main farm and we'll have a quick, quick chat. So basically, where do you go from here? So, realistically, what I would be doing is just rinse and repeat logging. So cutting down the trees. You'll need to get a stump grinder to remove these stumps before replanting. Um, but there's a couple of different options for that. So we'll have a quick chat about those. So if we come into forestry equipment, any of these mulches, so the TMC Cancella TFK200. Uh, the print-off Raptor will also do it. Oh, the so this obviously goes with the print-off Raptor self-propelled vehicle, which is this guy here on the right. Uh, SF900, so this is a stump grinder that can go on a three-point, so that'll get rid of it. Um, now, if you're on console, I will mention this. If you wanted to get rid of these trees once you've planted it, so you've decided you've tried forestry, you hated it, you want to get rid of the trees, the only way to get rid of them on console is to cut them down and process them or you need to get a mod such as this guy so the lizard t-rex 600 so this is a mod this will delete trees okay so i've got a video uh explaining how to use this guy in a lot more depth um so it's downloadable content it's free it's for all platforms uh, but particularly for console if you want to get rid of these trees that's the only way to do it because once they're planted they are there until they're cut down okay so just keep that in mind so in this case here if i wanted to delete these trees i'd, I'd get the lizard t-rex run through delete them all get rid of them or i'd just start a new game or i would just persevere with perhaps maybe a smaller a smaller lot and then just incorporate that into the regular gameplay but because obviously the 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 forestry equipment so if we look at the tree harvester you know, we're looking at sort of 450k right there, plus a front loader and a grapple. And then if we go a forwarding trailer or any of that all other sort of stuff, it does get quite expensive. But on the flip side, the equipment required is quite low. So currently, the only thing we've leased is a front loader, a tree harvester, uh, a trailer and truck, and a tree planter, which I can't remember where I've, put, where I've placed. So it is somewhat economical in that regard. Um, and then we're also in New Farmer, we've still got our original tractors, harvest, combine harvester, etc. So we can be doing arable farming on other fields. Obviously, we can't do it where the trees are, but if we wanted to, we could expand into other, far other fields, other land, start building out our farm that way. So... If we just head over to this area here, let's just see how much it costs. So it's 1.16 million to buy. So it's a little bit out of the price range for a lot of people. 
Another forestry area potentially would be, yeah, maybe down there, maybe up here somewhere. So there's some of these plots you might be able to get in there. But once again, the land is quite expensive, okay, especially in New Farmer. So it's probably not really practical that you would go that go that route. It's going to be something you look to in the future. So utilizing your own land for this purpose allows you to grow trees, harvest them, cut them down and just keep repeating the cycle. So it's a little bit one dimensional in its gameplay, but that's basically, that's 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 one, this is one option and one way you can start your forestry journey um, in Farming Simulator 22 in new farmer mode. So let's wrap the video up. So there you have it guys, my guide to forestry. So getting started with forestry in Farming Simulator 22 and how to set up a forestry related farm in new farmer mode. So thanks very much for watching, really appreciate it. If you've got any questions, leave them below in the comments. Uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.